Christmas to me means togetherness and resting. I think Christmas is just a really good time to remember that it's not about what we do, it's about what God has done and He sent Jesus for us. So I think every Christmas I'm just reminded to rest. Christmas is a time of family and unity, no matter the state of your family. Uh, Christmas means to me that it's just a time for us to remember just who Jesus is, remember that He's Emmanuel, God with us. I think the season is just full of so much love and goodness. Um, so whatever's going on in the world, it's just a time to enjoy God's love. Um, it represents Jesus and I go to my Nana's every Christmas. So for me, Christmas is just about family and quality time and good food and building something new and something really cool. So Christmas to me means celebrating love and those that we've been gifted to do life with. Christmas time, I mean, yes, I love the presents and, you know, the kids, the toys, the, the smiling faces on Christmas morning, but uh, on Christmas I try to remember that as God gave His best gift to us, I try to look inside of myself and ask Him to, to, to reveal to me what's precious so I can extend that to His people. Uh, I don't want to give God something that didn't cost me anything. And I just hope that uh, on Christmas, I can be reset in the Father's love to be able to share with my brothers, my sisters, his family, all that he is. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Christmas at Legacy 2022. I don't know about you, but I see some good looking kids on stage right now. We're so excited to welcome our Legacy Kids Choir. Give it up one more time for them from the front to the back. Well, listen, they're going to lead us into worship this morning. They're going to sing an amazing song. We're so grateful for what God is doing in the lives of all of our kids in our kids department downstairs. And so we're excited to have them lead us in worship this morning.
on, could we go wild and crazy for our legacy kids? Oh, you can do better than that. Come on, let's give it up for our kids. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to the earth. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming and standing in the gap for us that no longer do we have to cry, Abba, Father, but we get to, no longer do we have to be those, Lord Jesus, who have no hope, but we get to be those who cry, Abba, Father, who get to acquaint with you, our God. Jesus, we declare today that you are worthy. You are worthy of all of the glory. You are worthy of all of the honor and all of the praise.
begin to lift your hands all across the room and pour your adoration upon Jesus this morning.
This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus.
Come on, can we thank our Legacy Worship team for leading us into the glorious presence of Jesus? 
Come on, we can do better than that. Let's really bless them and thank them. That's right. They deserve all the blessing and the honor, not only for leading us into the presence of Jesus today, but leading us into the presence of Jesus for all of 2022. Can we thank them again for all of their hard work, for all of the prayer, for all of the rehearsals, for all of the practice, and for everything that they put into not only their artistry, but also into the ministry, into the ministry of ministering to the Lord Jesus, both in private and in public, so that we can all come into this environment and be the beneficiaries of the secret history that they steward with God. We can never neglect to really thank our artists. It's very important, church, because, you know, when words fall short, art helps give meaning to deep things. I kept thinking all week long about the definition of love. You know, we're in the Advent sermon series, and I'm going to continue that now on our last theme, which is love. And as I thought about love all week, I realized, you know, it's really impossible to articulate the definition of love with words alone. Like we can use the Oxford and we can attempt it and do the best that we can. But when words fall short, what really gives us a great definition of love is an image, a picture, something to be seen, something to be experienced, something to be known. And the best definition of love that humanity has is the picture of the cross. There's really nothing better than that. And that's what we're celebrating this Christmas holiday season, church. We're celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, that was eventually hung up high and spread out wide on the cross, on the Mount of Golgotha, so that each and every one of us could be restored back to God, redeemed from our sin, and saved eternally by His grace. Could we just thank Jesus together this morning, church? Thank you for your love, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your amazing love. Well, if you have your Bible, let's open it up to Matthew chapter one. We're gonna read verse 18 through 25. My precious in-laws have already read that this morning on the video, Carl and Lila. If you guys didn't know, that's my wife's beautiful parents. And they read this already this morning, but I want us to read it again. So if you don't mind, let's just stand for the reading of the word. We're gonna read Matthew chapter one, verse 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, that means engaged, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, thank God for a supernatural encounter. But as he considered these things, I don't know if you've ever been Joseph in the story before. You were considering some things that you knew were not the best for your life, but thank God for a supernatural encounter. Something happened and shifted the course of your life. That's what I've been praying would happen to some of you, perhaps all of us this Sunday morning as we celebrate Advent. But as he considered these things, behold, An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, and she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Let's read verse 21 one more time. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus and he will save his people from their sins. I cannot think of anything more loving than that that he would save us from our sins. Verse 22, all of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, that's Isaiah. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Oh, come on. We acknowledge the presence of God in the room today. We acknowledge The Lord Jesus is with us this morning. And when Joseph woke up from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him immediate obedience. He took his wife, but he knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And then Joseph called his name Jesus. You know, that got to me this week as well. And he called his name Jesus. A lot of times, you know, we can't neglect to look at 
the importance of Mary in the story of the birth of Jesus. But it was Joseph, the dad, that gave him his name. See, fathers ascribe identity to their children. And this is a great opportunity this holiday season, dad, to get back in the game for God, to get back in the game with your marriage, to get back in the game with your kiddos. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who's in the room today, but that just struck me in the spirit this week as I read through that story a couple of times. I said, it was Joseph that gave the name. Wow. How loving are you, Lord? How loving are you, Lord, to give us such a good father, such a good son, such a good Holy Spirit. The title of the message today, church, is this, Emmanuel shall save his people from their sins. Emmanuel, God with us, shall save his people from their sins. Let's pray. Lord, we say thank you today for setting us free of our sin. Where would we be this morning without your grace? Where would we be this morning without your redemption? Where would we be without you, Lord Jesus? We say thank you for being Emmanuel and thank you for coming with a purpose. Thank you for coming with a mission to save us from our sins. So Lord, I ask today by the precious, powerful blood of Jesus that you would move throughout this sanctuary today and you would set us free of any and all sin in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. Amen. You can be seated. So I'm not gonna preach for very long today because we wanted to utilize the majority of our time together to worship and to sing and to remember. And I think we've done a great job at that. Wouldn't you guys agree? You know, the beautiful thing about Christmas songs is that they're sermons. Were you guys reading the lyrics? I mean, those are not just songs, they're sermons. And one of the amazing things I love about music, once again, we're back on the art thing is that it's a great opportunity for us to be formed. You know, our our words, they create our world. And whenever we sing worship songs and when we sing good theology, we're formed in a good way and we come to the right conclusions and we develop right doctrines. And that's one of the beautiful things about Christmas songs is they're just so full of good theology, at least most of them. They're good, they're, 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 they're full of good theology. So it's good for us to sing these songs today, to sing out the Christmas story. And so as we examine this theme of Advent love today, I'm reading these seven verses of scripture and I'm asking myself the question in my study, where does love jump out of the scripture into my heart? And there's a lot of instances because even, I mean, we can presuppose, I know it's an ancient, you know, time, but we can presuppose that Joseph and Mary, they were in love. Otherwise he would have just dismissed her whenever he found out that she had the Holy Spirit as her baby daddy. Can you imagine how that argument went down? You're pregnant. Yeah, but it's the Holy Spirit. Oh, it's the Holy Spirit. So you're just going to use Isaiah against me like that. I can't believe you would blaspheme like that. Thank God for the supernatural encounter of the angel that resolved that argument so that they could get married. We can assume that there was some love between them. We can also look at the fact that God handpicked Mary, God loves Mary. And then after the supernatural encounter that Joseph has in a dream with an angel, he chose to continue in his relationship with Mary and get married to her once again. Love jumps off of the page and shows us where God is at work. It's amazing as well. What happens in the encounter is that the very first thing that the angel does is he reminds Joseph of Joseph's identity. He says, you are a son of David. And Joseph would have remembered, yes, from the lineage of David would come the Messiah. And so the angel confirms this. He says, yes, you are of the lineage of David. And from this lineage will come the Messiah. Take Mary as your wife. And what I want you to know is that she is going to have a baby. And that baby is going to be a boy. You're going to have a son. And I want you to give him a name because he is Emmanuel. And I want you to call him Jesus. And so Joseph, he awakens from this dream. And what I love about Joseph is that he wastes no time. He immediately jumps into action whenever he receives the message of the good news. And that's what I want us all to do today. 
I don't want us to waste any time today, church, as we hear and we remember the goodness of God in Christ Jesus, Emmanuel, that came to save you from your sins, that we would receive the word with full hearts this morning and we would spring into action as to whatever it is that the Holy Spirit would ask you to let go of because Emmanuel has come to save you from your sins. Now, I know like talking about sin is not really like a popular Advent, Christmas time, light the tree kind of message. But when you look at really where I think God kind of hangs the nail in these seven verses of scripture, it's verse 21. Whenever God proclaims Messiah is going to Advent and when he does, he will come with a mission. And that mission is to save me. Everybody say me. Because it's about you and it's about us to save me from my sin. That's why Emmanuel showed up, to save us from our sin. Now, anytime you talk about being saved from your sin, automatically your mind goes to John chapter 3, verse 16. At least mine does because it's the most famous verse of Scripture in all of the New Testament. And it highlights our theme today, which is love for God so the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but they would have everlasting life so that we could live with him in all of eternity once he saves us and frees us from our sins. This truly church is the best definition of love that humanity has at its disposal. I know right now a lot of people are talking about what love is, how to articulate love, how to define love, but the Bible defines love for us through 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. It says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. So any definition of love that we have that does not include sacrificial giving of oneself for the sake of another does not need to be embedded within our definitions of love because God has defined love for us here. Love has no greater one than this, that he would lay down his life for his friends. You remember that? John chapter 15. This is what love looks like. Love always looks like something. And I know you guys are gonna get some good gifts in a few days. I'm gonna see it in my Instagram stories. I'm gonna see it. I, I promise, I know. You guys are gonna get some designer clothing, praise God. You, you guys are gonna get some good fragrances. I always enjoy the first Sunday of the new year. Everybody walks in here smelling like Lilabo, Tom Ford. I mean, I mean it's, it's just like you walk into a Nordstrom. Man, what's that? Is that the incense? The frankincense, the myrrh? No, that's Santal 33, baby. Yeah, I know, I know. And we're all gonna be happy. We're gonna get some gifts. It's gonna be amazing. And our friends and our parents and our loved ones and our spouses, these gifts are gonna be expressions. They're gonna be manifestations of love. But don't let us forget, church, that the greatest expression of love, that the greatest definition of love is not a present that could be wrapped up with a bow, but it's the presence of Jesus as he's arrived and he went to the cross for you so that you could get set free of your sin. I know you've heard this message before and you might be thinking, well, I am saved eternally. Yes, but do you need to be saved immediately? Because I have a feeling just like me, there's some things that I've carried through 2022 and I don't want to carry those things into 2023. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's hurts. I don't know if it's hangups. I don't know if it's wounding. I don't know if it's offense or unforgiveness, but whatever it is that you're clinging on to, I want you to know again, church, Emmanuel came to save you from your sins. And so it's time for us. And I wanted to take a moment today to remember this truth so that we could invite Emmanuel to us right now and say, save me from my sins. I know that my salvation is eternally secure. But in the immediate, in the here and now, I wanna be set free of some stuff. I don't know if anybody else in the room will be, you know, so bold, so honest, so vulnerable to say, I need you, Emmanuel. I'm dependent upon you, Lord Jesus. 
I've got nothing without you. Unless you set me free, I can't be free. Unless you keep on setting me free, I'm gonna end up back in chains. Unless your grace is with me and your goodness is upon me, there ain't gonna be nothing that I could do in my own strength in 2023. I need an advent, I need Jesus, I need Emmanuel to save me from my sins. And, and you know, if, if by chance there's somebody in the room that's like, not me. <laughs> Romans 3, 23 says, everybody has sinned. Do y'all remember that one? And have fallen short of the glory of God. Later in 1 John chapter one, it says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. I believe that Emmanuel wants to set some people free today. So if you don't mind, just take a moment right where you are. Just bow your head, close your eyes. I want to ask you to just take a moment of reflection. Sin is a wrong relationship with God. Sin is not having a right relationship with God. Sin is wrong attitudes towards God. Sin is wrong actions towards God. Sin is wrong actions and attitudes towards other people, towards yourself. That's what sin is. That's how the Bible defines sin. We know all of us do it. We've all missed the mark. We've all fallen short. But if there is something that you can identify right now in your meditation that is sinful, can you just invite Emmanuel to take that thing from you and just pull that weight off of your shoulders? Emmanuel, you came to save us and I pray that you do some saving right now. I pray that you bring some freedom right now to this room. I pray that you would set us free from our sin right now in Jesus' name. You know, the Bible teaches us how to be set free from sin and that's repentance. Anytime we're willing to repent, God's willing to redeem and sanctify and set free and refresh. It's one of the beautiful things the New Testament tells us where there's repentance, God will bring refreshing. And if you feel like 2022 has been a dry and parched land, here's a ticket to the promised land for you in 2023. It's called repentance. So if you need to repent in the room today, I just wanna ask you to repeat after me. Say, Jesus, Emmanuel, I repent of my sins and I turn from my ways and I turn towards your face and I receive your grace. All the days of my life, I belong to you. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for strengthening me. Holy Spirit, fill me and send me into your purpose for my life. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen. Let's stand up together. The ushers are gonna help us light some candles and we're gonna sing together. So thank you so much, um, team, for serving us and for helping us. Team's gonna lead us into a time of worship. The lyrics will be on the screen. So let's lift our voices and let's sing together.
Merry Christmas, church. <laughs> we love you guys so much. We're so grateful to have spent 2022 serving you as pastors and just people who love you, to be honest. You guys are our covenant family, and we are grateful to celebrate Christmas with you. Thanks for being a part of this family. You guys can blow out your candles so you don't light the church on fire. As we're closing today, each and every Sunday, we always create space to honor the Lord through our, our tithe and our offering. If it's your home church and you want to tithe today, you came prepared to give. Uh, we don't want to neglect creating space for that. So if you need to use it, the QR code is on the screen. I know a lot of people are still giving in the Big Give, the year-end expansion offering, um, which I, I don't know what our numbers are now, but I do know that we're well over $80,000 that has come in for the year-end expansion offering to give. So thank God for that. Well, Merry Christmas. I love you all so very much. And if today happened to be your first Sunday with us here at Legacy, a friend brought you or you're here with a family member or you just decided to come today, I just wanna say welcome from our family to yours. We're so glad that you decided to join us today. Christmas is my favorite time of year because, you know, it's about being with family and celebrating Jesus and there's nothing better than that. So thanks for joining our family. We're gonna have um, Christmas service next week online because as you know, Christmas Day falls on a Sunday. So we have an incredible set of services for you. So as you're opening presents, hanging out with your family, please tune in to our YouTube channel to find our Christmas services there. There's gonna be four services streaming, which is awesome. You can't miss it. But also, on the very first Sunday of the year, we are gonna be having church. I don't think it's a coincidence this year that a Sunday is the very first day of the year. So we're gonna spend it worshiping together and ringing in the new year in the presence of God. So we're gonna be doing two services at 10, 30 and 12. So feel free to still celebrate the new year the night before, sleep in with your family and come to our 10, 30 or 12 noon service. And if you are a part of our serve team here or are looking to be a part of our serve team. We have our very first team church of the year, which is a service specifically designed for leaders and team members and future team members here at Legacy happening on the first Wednesday of the month on January 4th. You are all invited to join us for that. So with that being said, Merry Christmas. We love you and we'll see you in the new year.